Right, so uh, hello, welcome back to uh, the Gaming Pantry for a pickups video for the end of May 2022. Hi, hope you're all well. Nice to see you back here once again. If you are back here, if you're here for the first time, thanks for clicking on the video. Uh, hope you enjoy what you see, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. But uh, yeah, so uh, pickups. Yeah, I didn't say there were going to be too many of those this month. And to be fair, this is it. The last one I did couple of weeks ago um, was mostly stuff that uh, people had sent me. Uh, this is going to be, I've got one thing which somebody has sent me which I wasn't expecting at all which was fantastic um, but the rest of this uh, is, uh, is, is stuff I bought just this past weekend which is great. New t-shirt as well, I'm, I'm hoping uh, people can see that there. It's bloody daylight business really doesn't annoy me. A bubble bubble t-shirt which was a, a gift from Mrs Bear. So thank you very much Mrs Bear. I know you will be watching. That's a great t-shirt. Really, really nice quality this one. So um, hopefully to go into the old rotation anyway. But uh, yeah, yes, yesterday I went out with uh, my good mate John and his other half Nicky. We went out and did some of the uh, local independent shops. Well, it was quite a good day out. We were out for about five hours, near enough. I think we had a spot to eat as well, which was nice. Made a bit of a day of it, so it uh, wasn't a bad day, unlike today, which just got better. A bit wet, but not so. Uh, but it's just nice to get out and do something for, uh, for a change. I don't really do much like that now. Um, I it's just, just I don't know, so I've lost the interest in it, but uh, it, it's, it's good going on your own, but you know, perhaps not quite as much fun as it used to be. Don't know. Anyway, I've talked too much about that in the past. I'm not going to go on about it now. Uh, so, like I said, one gift and a few pickups here. We did a few of the local independents. Again, a bit hit and miss as to what we could find. Um, the first thing we found was was a shop called Sega Supplies, which we tried to go into uh, on the road trip Midlands leg when that was down this way, but we couldn't get in because they were shut. I think it was, back, I think it was the pre-May uh, Day bank holiday, so this was the, the weekend before the Jubilee holiday. And uh, John had mentioned before, the day before, that the uh, the guy there had obviously got some stuff out the back. And he invited John round the back, but well, I'm not sure, was, was it, was it maybe, come on, I don't know. I don't think so anyway. <laughs> um, but uh, he said, no, no, John didn't have time, so he messaged me and I said, oh great, well, we'll go tomorrow then, we'll have a look at that. So we had a, a quick look. Around there, and it, it was there was a few things in there. Um, there was a couple of interesting sorts. There was a 3DO which wasn't working correctly, which um, I inquired about basically to see if Mrs. Bear would have it as a project. But the price wasn't quite right, you know, um, not even worth a punt. So I thought well, that's not really worth it. And besides, of the six games that were de there, John had basically bought two. <laughs> Just looked at the box. Oh, I said 3DO. He went, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I haven't got those two, because I think he's got one, and then I probably he's got one because he bought the games for it. He just took, how did you want for that? I was like, oh, hang on a second, that's reduced the value of this somewhat. Um, <laughs> so that didn't quite work out. But there were some, some interesting things in it. You had to research through it. He got stuff everywhere, bogs and, uh, bogs, bags and boxes of stuff with what he paid for it on there. There was some, you know, some quality stuff there. But uh, I could find one thing I really wanted. Um, there was one thing I nearly picked up, which was the uh, Atari ST. I think there was a, it was called Light Force, which was a compilation. I think it had um, um, R Type, IK Plus, something else that escapes me at this moment in time, and Voyager, which was an ocean game. Uh, but uh, John again picked that up, and I said, What are you doing with that? He said, You don't collect ST, give it to me. So I, I sort of snatched it off him, literally. And when I actually went in there, I thought, oh, it's discs. I thought it was tapes, discs. Okay, well, that's fine. Uh, and then I counted the discs and realised they'd all got numbers on the front of them. And there was one disc missing, which I presume was the game that I can't think of now. So I thought, ah, well, that's a bit of a shame, isn't it, really? So um, we passed that one up. I've got R-Type anyway. I'm pretty sure I've got IK+. Plus. So I had the Atari ST Power Pack when I got my ST, all the discs were still in there. So I'm certainly thinking at least, I know R-Type was part of that, so it wasn't really a massive loss, although I do like my old school compilations 8 and 16 bit. So that was the only thing, but the only thing I could pick up in there, and this was, uh, I, I couldn't quite believe my luck with this, because most people who've watched this channel for quite some time will know my, my interest in these sort of games, basically because I can't believe they actually made games about them. So what I picked up for the Wii, 
uh, is Rapala We Fish. Now this is the um, the reel and rod combination edition. I've actually got this as a separate game, but as you can see, it's a box. It's a very nice box. Um, it's a little bit of muck on the bottom, which will need tidying up. You can't see that today because the sunlight is natural today. And it's a real pain in the backside. It's the best lighting I can do. This is so I do apologise if you can just sort of see the white t-shirt and nothing else and the games. You don't really want to see me. But this does come with the the reel and rod. I've already, I've already got the Fishing Frenzy Rapala game as well, which also comes as a special uh, collector's pack like that. And um, there we go. So I've now got the two Rapala fishing rods, which is great. Now I open this up, and some of you will be absolutely stunned to know, to work this out, that this game is, doesn't look like it's been touched. Um, it really doesn't. I mean, I don't think that I've seen a better looking manual in like that for some time. The safety booklet's there as well, the disc has got no marking on it whatsoever. I'm sure you're absolutely stunned. That's the back of the box again then, which is on the game. So we're absolutely stunned to see that. And this is where the, the fishing rod bit comes into it as well. And as you can see there, I'm not going to take it all out because I, I, I daren't really, because I might not get it back in again. Um, well as you can see, there we go. The it's all in the poly still. Polys are still sealed. So it's a little, and that is actually no damage to that box whatsoever, to be honest with you. It's um, in absolutely tip top condition. So I paid a fiver for that. And I'm, I must admit, I have not seen that one. I've seen the other one, Fishing Frenzy, which I've got. But I've never seen that one complete. And it's also, it's actually a Rapala, you might see there on the red of the rod, it's actually a Rapala branded one. So not just a generic wee fishing rod. So I thought for a fiver, yeah, it's more more stuff for the cupboard, isn't it? But I may get some use out of it. But yeah, fishing game. There we go. I've not seen too many of those. Horse racing game seems to be dried up now. Um, before we go on to what I've got in my uh, other independent shop, I'd like to say a big thank you very much indeed to um, Chris, uh, Chris over at Bin Boots Hell Picking, who has very kindly sent me something which I... I didn't know was coming. I got a message from, from Mrs. Bear while I was out on Saturday and uh, just simply cut the photographs from one showing a parcel and two showing the name on the back. So Chris, I know it's come from you. And I think that you picked this up recently and I said it was on my short list of games that I wanted to get for the Xbox One. So thank you very much indeed for sending me this way. If you did try and email me by the, by the way, my friend, I've changed my email address. I'm using a different one now. Um, but I'll if you go into my information bit, I'll change it and you should be able to find it in there. So if you want to drop me a line or something, that'd be great. Um, and I can get in contact with you again to thank you properly. Uh, but he sent, he sent me a copy of Sunset Overdrive. So I remarked a few weeks ago that this will be one game I wanted to pick up. And um, you see, as Chris does always, he puts a little bit of bubble wrap on the disc there. So you don't really need to see the inside of an Xbox One game, do you folks? I mean, you know what they look like anyway. But yeah, well, I, I just remarked that, that, that this is probably one of the few games that I wanted actually to pick up as a say. I think it's an exclusive title, isn't it? This is only on Xbox One. This is the day one release. And there's a, a little bit of the back for you as well. So I should look forward to playing that. But this is not the first time Chris has looked after me on, on these things. And I do appreciate it, my friend. Day one edition includes nothing but the hits and gun. It's me fizzy character outfit, a hardcore hammer, melee weapon. Possibly they may not be there anymore. No, they may have been used. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I would look forward to playing that. So thank you very much. It's completely unexpected. But like I said, I've changed my email address in the information section, get in contact with me, and I'll, I'll uh, thank you properly. But yeah, Chris sent me some stuff a couple of years ago. He sent me uh, something else recently. He sent me a few things, actually. Now, it's about the third little parcel he sent me, which is really good of him. Um, so, great channel. I'll stick a link in the description below if you've not seen Bin Boots I'll pick and do go, because he finds some amazing stuff. Uh, yeah, constantly, I, I just had this constant conversation with him for about six months now, where I'm convinced that there is, there is absolutely nothing in the wild anymore. And he says, now you've got to look in all the right places, you've got to keep trying. And to his credit, this is exactly what he does. Exactly what he does. He's plugging away. He finds the most amazing stuff and he doesn't pay a lot for it. He buys a lot of it for himself. He also buys a lot of it for trade credit and he does a bit of selling as well. But great. So go and have a look at his channel if you've not seen it before. If you like that sort of stuff, it is right up your street. And then we went along to uh, Vintage Gamer. So we've been to Sega Supplies. We've been to Old School Gaming in Bradley Hill. Nothing there this time. 
Um, uh, John picked a few bits up. He just did a huge deal, which if you want to go have a look at, at what John's done, I'll stick a link in the John's channel below as well. You know, his retro kit. Uh, he's already put his video up about what he did. He didn't waste any time like I did. He went straight in there and put that video out so people could see exactly what it was. So, um, what did I get from Vintage Gamer? Uh, well, I went in there, as usual, I always head out the back to where all the 8-bit stuff is, and it's all piled up under boxes, and I'm thinking... <sighs> you know, last time, I, last time I was in there, I'm not slagging Nick, I'm not slagging the shop off. The last time I was in there with, with uh, Sean and Dave, um, I was pulling boxes down for them to have a, primarily for Sean to have a go through and try and find some stuff. So I walked out the back and there's all stuff all over the floor and I think, oh God, I can't even get to it this time. And, and I think they'd, they were still putting, I think I heard Nick say he was putting, still putting stuff away from after doing the Birmingham gaming market. Uh, and then they got stuff piled up and it was purely by accident I found this stuff. Absolutely, all five of these, I just found these, they were just piled up and I thought, oh, there we go. Um, all stuff I could actually reach and grab hold of. Because there's other stuff I could reach and grab hold of, but if there was, I mean, a great pile of stuff coming down on me. I know what people are going to say. It's what he would have, how he wanted to go, you know, buried under a pile of games. But no, not really. Um, so I picked these up. And it's, it's really strange because um, I've got one Commodore 64, one Spectrum and three Amstrad to show you. Uh, let's start with the Commodore 64 game. Probably the most least interesting one for most people. Uh, so we've got a copy here of... Uh, RBI Baseball 2. Now I think, I'm not sure whether it is this one or the first one. The first one's actually a hit squad game and it's incredibly expensive. Well, I say incredibly expensive. It's not easy to pick up. I don't think I have RBI Baseball. I know I've got World Series Baseball, which is a hit squad release as well. But RBI Baseball or RBI Baseball 2 ends up on the hit squad label. Um, so yeah, I never actually played uh, this one. I had the only baseball game I played in the Commodore 64 was Hardball, uh, which I also played on the Amiga as well. I've got some of the MLB games for the PlayStation 3, the American versions. I've got, I've got baseball games all over. I've got, I've got Mario Super Sluggers for the Wii, which is the American only version. I've got the MLB The Show games as well, the Bigs games. So I've got a few of them, but I just haven't played them a great deal. Um, but yeah, I, I saw they had this a couple of weeks ago, and I think it may have made its way to Birmingham and back again. Um, but yeah, the size of that manual, that is a thick old booklet there. Uh, but that's in good condition, that's the English and the Italian version. And uh, there's the uh, tape as well, which actually hasn't got a, a big loading thing on it, there's not quite a lot of tape in there. But yeah, I mean, that's a good condition uh, for what I paid for it. Um, so, nice to have that one. Again, nice to have a, a, a decent, you know, so with, some of the, with some of the 8 bit stuff, but especially, uh, it's nice to have these boxes. The cases are all well and good, dual cases, all the little ones, but they actually have the old cardboard. You know, people have gone about Nintendo cardboard. Yeah, fine cardboard, yeah, it's got a bit of scuffing around yet, so I mean, look, it's, it's superficial as far as I'm concerned. As long as the thing isn't squashed flat and bits missing off it, I ain't really bothered. Um, the kickoff of baseball games, it says, but yeah, so RBI 2, so yeah, that was a nice little find, that one. I thought that actually might be a bit more than it was, but it wasn't. Um, let's do the Spectrum game then, and this this is the one that stumped Nick, because he, he tends to have a, a, a fairly good handle on what he's got and what he hasn't got. And I'd sort of made a little pile next to where Nicky was doing the shopping on the phone, because Nicky loves coming out with me and John, which he spends most of the time on the phone doing the weekly shopping. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, it's great to hang around with these guys. Really, really, really good people. Love, love spending time with them, Nicky and John. And um, I saw them. I picked this up. I put. I said, "I'm going to leave this next to you for a minute while I have a quick look at it." She's like, "Yeah, fine, mate." So anyway, Nick's doing what he does, which is walking around giving prices to people. He's about to pop outside for a smoke, and he walks past the pile of games I put there. He's old this game. He's only going. He said, "Never even heard of this one." So. Obviously stumped him on this, and I still stumped him on this because he still didn't know anything about it after we finished talking and trying to agree on a price on it. So this is the Spectrum, um, and we've got uh, this. I remember seeing this game in the magazines, or at least the advert for it, thinking, "Wow, I'd, I'd like to get like to play that because it just looks like my, my sort of game." And this is a uh, Fox Fights Back, which appears to be a fox taking rearguard action and get his own back on the fox hunters. And there appears to be some sort of hunting gentleman there and some dogs. 
Um, right, it says Kiss Mine on, on his badge there. Right, it's quite good. But it's a fox with a machine gun. How could you not possibly want to play that? Uh, features include great animation, 100% leg biting action, weapon pickups, a massive play area, and multi level play. Uh, two times have the, the hounds have tried to put him down, but he'll force the Hell's Beagles back to the Broyers. Blast your way through bullets and bombs as all the force of nature are set against you. A great game from Denian Designs and published by uh, Imageworks. You can't really see much there, but uh, I'm like, wow, that's brilliant. This. So uh, I was uh, chuffed to get that. I'll give you a quick look at the tape. There we go. It came out of uh, Market Records. If anybody knows where Market Records were, there we go. A little bit of bubbling on the label, I'm not bothered about that. You can see the uh, cartoony graphics continue on the inside, all the material is there. Fox is a bit, the box got a crack at the front, but that really is not the end of the world and something like this. As you can see, there's the fold out on it. Loving it. Really, really good. I, I, I do love these, these, these games. I mean, they, they mean so much to me because this is what I grew up with. So I know there's been an awful lot of 8-bit stuff on this channel this year. And I make no apologies for that, because it's it's something I'm collecting a lot for, and I'm glad I can go to three or four places and actually go through it all. And it's there. Because it wasn't there, I'd be, I'd be probably collecting other stuff. Um, it's, it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. And then we've got three Amstrad games to show you. More, yeah, Amstrad stuff. Yes, Amstrad. Yes, because we've got Amstrad things. Um, so, what have we got here? Uh, we've got now this game. I, I thought um, this game. I'm under the impression came out. It was produced by somebody different on other systems, and I wasn't aware that this was uh, something which came out on this particular label. But what we've got here is a copy of Shadow of the Beast. Now you can see it's been released by Gremlin. Now I'm no, it's just a psychosis game. So. But I've never actually seen this on the Amstrad before, which is really weird. But again, yeah, okay, a little bit of superficial scuffing around the, the, the tops and the corners of the box, which you'd expect. But other than that, it's a really nice condition little box. And I thought, well, I'm having that just for the condition of it. And see, what have we got inside? Well, we've got a warranty card. So you can actually fill that out and send it off to, to Gremlin and go on their mailing list. You've got a very, very nice little instruction booklet, which again is in very, very good condition. It's, it's, you know, people remark about the flatness of things. Considering this game is probably around about 30 years old, uh, doesn't give me the date on the back side. Oh, 1990, so 32 years old. It's in good condition. And we've got a little bag to keep your disc, uh, your disc in your um, tapes in. Two tapes, and it's interesting, it says here, because um, I thought, oh, we've got a bonus. No. Um, we've got Shadow of the Beast, which says. Uh, Tape one, sorry, side one, and we've also got Shadow of the Beast side three. So my guessing this is going to be a multi-load nightmare. Uh, by multi-load, for anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about, is a lot of these games which came on tapes uh, had to be loaded in bit by bit, not just as a you know you just didn't put the tape in, it loaded. You put the tape in, it loaded, and then you had to load the next level in, and then if you died, because don't forget back in those days you had limited lives, if you died you'd have to rewind the tape to a previous stage and load it in again. Yep, real pain in the backside. But um, I thought, again, that's a really nice condition box. Nice to find that as well. Only Gremlin can do this, as it says at the bottom. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Shadow of the Beast at all, but I thought for the condition that was in, and the fact I'd never seen it on the Amstrad before, I should pick that up. And then finally, um, we've got two compilation games. Oh yes, the old, old Retro Bear does enjoy his old 8-bit compilations. Um, it's becoming a bit of an obsession this year, not, not quite to the point where I'm, I'm sitting there scouring eBay 24 hours a day, 7 days a week trying to pick these up. It's just when I see them, occasionally once a week I will have a quick look on eBay just to see what's there and try and gauge what the prices are in case I come across it in the wild. And these two here, one I've never seen before, as far as I can remember, and the other one uh, has got some of the, the great games on there and I'm absolutely delighted to pick it up. It's both Amstrad as well. Let's do the one uh, that I've never seen before, because I think that might be more interesting. That's more interesting, because some people may never have heard of this compilation. And don't forget, with the 8-bit stuff, and again with the 16-bit stuff as well, 
uh, you, you tend to find that some of the uh, compilations are uh, machine specific. So this may or may not have come out on the other 8-bit systems or even even the 16-bit ones, I don't know. If anybody does know that, please, please, please put the comment in below, I'd love to know. It's more interesting to find about these things than I do. So what we've got here, this is a US Gold compilation, okay, not the greatest stuff. Uh, what we've got here is Max, excuse me, because my money, I keep forgetting to do that. Max, now this has got uh, Turrican 2, uh, we've got ST Dragon, uh, then we've got a game called Night Shift, which I'll come to in a second, and then over there we've got Swiv. Now, what's interesting is by US Gold. Now, as far as I'm aware, Turrican 2 is a Rainbow Arts game. Uh, ST Dragon may possibly have been Activision, I don't know. I'm pretty sure Swiv was uh, Virgin Games, and Night Shift, I believe, was US Gold. I'm trying to work out what it is. But yes, we've got four games on this compilation here, um, as it says there in the top corner. 40 badged accolades, which means the magazines are giving, are giving more high ratings. Now, Night Shift is not one you see a huge amount of. It's a Lucas uh, film game. It's like a puzzle game. The rest is uh, ST Dragon and Swiver sort of shooters, and Turrican 2 is very much a uh, run and gun. So, really interesting combination of uh, titles on this system. Again, just to show you the inside, we've got a nice manual. Which is good and also great about this manual as well because obviously I do like my compilations. There's a couple of compilations here as well which may be worth tracking down. You've got Super Sega, uh, which is uh, we've got Crackdown, not the, the the game that's been around for about the last 10 15 years, a, a original Crackdown. Uh, Super Monaco Grand Prix, E SWAT, Golden Axe, and Shinobi that's that Sega one that there. And then the other one, which is a super, uh, the Super Simpack for sports, which I think it is. I've never seen this one before. And you've got International 3D Tennis, Crazy Cars 2. Okay, it's not all that great. Italy 90 and Airborne Ranger. And again, you can see across the bottom, there are four different developers. Uh, so you've got Titus, Micropose, uh, US Gold. I can't read the other one, but I know that was uh, done by Sensible originally, I think it was. It might be Palace Software, that one, possibly. Yes, Palace software. Um, but I'd never seen that one before. So that's an interesting one to try and track down. I mean, to be fair, I, don't, I played the International 3D Tennis on Commodore Corner last year. It's not bad, not bad. Crazy Cars 2, uh, Crazy Cars games are terrible. The Commodore 64 version of Crazy Cars 2 is awful. Um, Italy 90 is, is not a bad football game. I had that on the Amiga, my friend of mine had it on, on the 64. It's not bad. And Airborne Range is pretty good as well. So that's not a bad one to find. And certainly that Super Sega compilation. I mean, there's, you know, Golden Axe. Shinobi, Super Monaco Grand Prix, you can't go wrong. It's a nice manual in that one. We've also got um, a US gold booklet. There we go, on the streets, yeah. Gold on the streets, yeah, because we're trying to look hard. And they just it's a great sort of collection of games and things that are coming out here. It's brilliant. Can we like to see these sort of things? Again, it's absolutely in mint condition. Games in here just out of interest. Line of Fire, E SWAT, UN Squadron, Stroy the Two, uh, the Platinum compilation, which was Capcom, uh, which is super. Uh, sorry, Strider, Black Tiger, Ghouls and Ghosts, Forgotten Worlds, and Lead Storm. Uh, Sega Master Mix, which we just talked about. We've got uh, Vaccine, a game called Vaccine Operation Harrier. Sporting Gold, which is a compilation of all the winter and summer game, uh, winter, sorry, summer game compilations. There's a System 3 compilation, which contains uh, Tusker, Vendetta, Myth and IK+. Plus. If you watch my video from the Birmingham Gaming Market, that's actually the one I've got the manual for, which wasn't in the box I thought it was going to be. And we've got things, uh, Gold of the Aztecs, Murder, Operation, Stealth, Book Rogers, Countdown to Doomsday, Eye of the Beholder, Crime Wave, Mean Streets. I had that on the Amiga. I'll show you that one there if you can see it. Mean Streets, I actually had that one on the Amiga. Strange game. King's Bounty, The Legend of Billy Boulder, Sword Sorcerer, uh, 1942, Battle for Britain, The Finest Hour, Secret Weapons of the Luftwaffe, Secret of Monkley Island, Loom, um, Renegade Legion, Interceptor, and Night Shift. So, I mean, you can't just. There's so many games there I, I've heard of. Some I've played, some I've owned, some I've got absolutely no knowledge of whatsoever. Uh, we've also got a warranty card, which is nice. Actually, it's not a warranty card. It's <laughs> the International Trade Journal Rapid High Speed Automatic Doors. What on earth is this doing in there? Um, 
so again this is absolutely fantastic someone's actually filled this out uh, industrial trade journal thing okay flyer and you can actually send it you can fill in your information send it back well somebody actually filled this in so this game's come from um uh kitty minster well i won't show the box it's actually got somebody's address now i wouldn't dare run the risk of somebody actually doing it um one month 30p weekly my goodness me and there's your tapes as well got four tapes in there i was being a panic because i thought hang on four games four tapes there's one missing here but no uh, two of the games are on a, a tape each and the other two games are on one tape each so i double checked that to make sure i was uh, getting the right thing before i started but again great compilation i've not seen that one before if you've ever seen max uh, you've played it or you've, you've picked it up do try and find it i can't find it and, and you know Nick couldn't find it either. He just had searched eBay for it, no knowledge of it, but um, absolutely thrilled. I do love these compilations, I really do. I really, really do. Fascinating stuff. I put that on the wrong way around. I spent all that time trying to work out where it is, but the wrong way around. Right, so, great, that's Mac on the Amstrad. And finally, this one, well, th these games do not need any introduction. Um, again, just by pure chance, I found this. Great condition again for its age. I mean, if you have an 8 bit system, if you have a 16 bit system, micros predominantly, um, but you can get these games across all, 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 you know, you can get these games on the NES. Uh, I believe you can get all three on the NES. You can get two of these, and you can get all these on the Master System as well. Sorry, apologies. You can get all these on the Master System as well. So, if you, you know, 8 bit systems micros and consoles if you get a chance to find it pick it up because you will not find three better games on a compilation this is the addicted to fun rainbow collection for the amstrad and this has got bubble bubble rainbow islands and new zealand story on it i mean i cannot think of three greater games to have on a compilation three belting arcade games three are belting arcade conversions and games that i spent many many hours playing like I said, this is the Amstrad version. So I know I, I picked up a Rainbow Islands on Hit Squad a few weeks back for the Amstrad, back in February. But I don't think I've got any versions on these games anyway. What's he got inside there? Well, very little, but I'll tell you something. It's got a cracking manual with it. That is an absolute belting quality little manual, that. That really is. Um, and it's purple as well, which fits in with the whole thing. Now, I presume there might have been a, a, the old ocean bag to go with this. Um, but there, there isn't anything else in the box, unfortunately. Uh, but what I can show you there is all three tapes are inside. And they are all the correct ones. They aren't any swapped in and out. We've got the Addicted to Fun collection. Uh, Rainbow collection. Rainbow Islands, New Zealand story and Bubble Bobble. And they're all the right formats. They're all the right ones there as well. Just a shame there's no actual... Uh, I, would have, I would have thought there would have been a poly bag in here. Because uh, Ocean did put like their own branded bags in. Because you wouldn't be able to get a plastic holder in there with the three tapes and that would have been difficult to do but it's got the instruction manual it's got that so absolutely chuffed the bits to get that um and the three games i've got i say paid a fiver for a power if i didn't mention that before which i did and i paid a fiver each for all of these so 25 quid for those five there as well which i think is a very very good deal indeed and uh, again my thanks to the guys at vintage gamer for uh, holding such great stock not just for the selling, it's really holding it. Because like I said, you know, to find things like that, just literally a mile up the road, is fantastic, and not having to sit there and go through eBay and whatever. But anyway, have you played any of those? Um, do you like any of those? Are you interested in any of those? Uh, let me know um, in the comments below. That would be fantastic. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, don't forget to give us one of those. And you can also uh, subscribe, and you can share the video and tick the bell for notifications and all that stuff uh, a massive thank you once again to john and nikki for their company on saturday a massive thank you to chris over at bin boots Al picking for his generosity for sending me a copy of sunset overdrive which i'm going to be really interested to look forward to playing at some point in the future um and if i get a chance to post the results i will do so chris don't forget getting in contact as well i'd like to speak to you as well mate and thank you personally for that um in the meantime, that's it. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, we'll see you again very soon. But until then, from the Gaming Pantry and the amazingly ridiculous daytime light, this is the Retro Bear saying toodaloo and bye for now.